Hi guys, welcome to a new video of Annotate First Aid with me. Today we are going to annotate gastrointestinal pathology. Uh, gastrointestinal pathology at page number 385. It is 385th page number of 2022 edition USMLE First Aid Step 1. Okay, uh, so in this page we are going to annotate these topics which are the previous neat questions. What are the viruses causing infectious gastritis in immunocompromised patients? There are many types of gastritis infectious gastritis and in immunocompromised patient the viruses causing them are cytomegalovirus and herpes simplex virus okay then uh, second one it's another neat question it's a scenario where you have got anemia peripheral smear showing macrocytes which means it is an um, macrocytic anemia then you are seeing hypersegmented neutrophils Sero serology shows anti parietal cell antibody what is this? This condition. This condition is pernicious anemia because we saw antiparietal cell antibody. And where is this pernicious anemia seen? It is in a type A gastritis. Okay. So uh, that something we are going to come on to but still we can just look at it. Two pages after in uh, 388th page number you have got chronic, chronic gastritis heading where you have got two types of gastritis. One is due to H. pylori, the other one is due to an autoimmune cause. H. pylori is called as, H. pylori is a bacteria, no? so this one is a type B gastritis. Autoimmune gastritis is also called as type A gastritis. Okay. H. pylori gastritis is the most common one, but autoimmune gastritis is uh, the condition where you have got autoantibodies that are T cell induced to the H. potassium ATPase on parietal cells. This is what we saw right now, no? and to intrinsic factor. So, when the intrinsic factor is deficient, you can't absorb vitamin B12 um, in a nice manner. Therefore, you have got pernicious anemia, macrocytic anemia. So, that was the question here. Um, this, this one, the answer to this question, anemia, peripheral smear showing macrocytes, uh, serology showing antiparietal cell antibodies, pernicious anemia seen in type A gastritis. Here, there is deficiency of intrinsic factor for B12 absorption. Okay. So, coming to the next question. Uh, it is in the topic of pleomorphic adenoma. See here, uh, pleomorphic adenoma is the most common salivary gland tumor. It can also be seen unilaterally. Okay, in NEAT, there was a question where you see the picture of a man having a uh, swelling behind his ear and it was lifting the ear lobule. Ear lobule was being lifted. They say cut and sign was positive. What is cut and sign positive means? Mm. Cut and sign positive means zygoma. The tumor cannot be moved past the zygoma. Hmm? That is called as cut and sign positive. That is something extra that I added. If it lifts the ear, ear lobule, that swelling, it is most probably pleomorphic adenoma. Okay. And then um, it is a radio resistant tumor. So what are we going to do? We are going to excise the tumor. Most commonly affects the superficial lobe. So you uh, superficial lobe. So we do a superficial pyrotidectomy in uh, pleomorphic adenoma. Okay. Then female males females are affected more common than males in the case of pleomorphic adenoma. It may undergo malignant transformation. Okay. Then um, about Warthin's tumor, there was another question where you were given a hot spot on radionuclide scan the picture of picture of a radionuclide scan was shown and there was a hot spot at the site of this uh, tumor okay and um, it is at the lower pole of parotid lower pole of parotid it is associated with smoking but this one has got no malignant potential superficial parotidectomy is what we do for the um, Warthin's tumor also that is a treatment for Warthin's tumor also in Warthin's tumor the histopathology is going to show uh, uh, going to show you double layered epithelial cells double layered epithelial cells are seen in the histopathology okay now we go on to the next topic achalasia cardia so important important thing in achalasia cardia is what is the associated malignancy there is higher risk of an esophageal cancer what is that okay it is uh, not adenocarcinoma in achalasia cardia it is squamous cell carcinoma and where is adenocarcinoma seen? Adenocarcinoma is seen in Barrett's esophagus. Okay. So, achalasia has got an S in it. Barrett has got no S in it. Achalasia has got an S and therefore it is squamous cell carcinoma involved with achalasia cardia. And uh, now we come on to the next paragraph where we are going to write this thing. Definitely treatment for achalasia cardia is Heller's myotomy. Heller's myotomy. They uh, told us na that uh, we are going to do surgery and endoscopic procedures and botulinum toxin injection. Definitive treatment the surgery is called as Heller's myotomy. That is the main thing that we do. Um, as the uh, definitive treatment and there are other surgeries like partial fundoplication, doors procedure, 
reinforce reinforcement of the sphincter these are the things that we do as a treatment for achalasia cardia remember that achalasia has got an s it causes squamous cell carcinoma then um a b chagas when you see achalasia cardia you just remember a b c what is this a b c a is achalasia cardia b for botulinum index injection chagas disease what is chagas disease caused by trypanosoma cruzi uh, this chagas disease also is a risk factor for the development of achalasia cardia okay this due to loss of myentic plexus this uh, failure of the lower esophageal sphincter to relax due to degeneration of inhibitory neurons in the myentic plexus of esophageal wall so that is the reason for achalasia cardia and what will happen there inhibitory neurons are degenerated there are no inhibitory neurons so there is excess of um, stimulation excess of contraction and this inhibitory neurons were secreting nitric oxide and vip that used to dilate the wall but here now it is not present and therefore um, you are having this um, achalasia cardia okay so a b chagas no vip a b is achalasia cardia b for botulinum toxin injection uh, chagas disease caused by trypanosoma cruzi predisposes to this condition nitric oxide and vip are decreased in achalasia cardia so uh, this is our annotation in this page now we go on to the other page that is page number 386 okay Uh, other esophageal pathologies just we are going to annotate these things most common site of fistulization in git if you check the whole git where can a fistula probably develop it is in the esophagus okay and the neat question most common site of ectopic gastric mucosa is it in the upper one third of esophagus lower one third of esophagus middle one third of esophagus when we think logically we might think that esophagus is connect when um, when we see that esophagus is connected to the stomach and therefore the most proximal or the most uh, um, adjacent part to the stomach is in the lower one third of esophagus so it could be the answer we would think in that way in a logical manner but the answer is in the upper one third of esophagus and there that thing that uh, gastric mucosa ectopically present in the upper one third of esophagus is called as an inlet patch therefore it is in the inlet of the esophagus no so it is called as an inlet patch okay then what else gastro uh, esophageal reflux disease how do we treat it medical management is by high dose of proton pump inhibitors yeah, grd the treatment is high dose of proton pump inhibitors mm. next we go on to esophagitis um two people who can cause esophagitis uh, in immunocompromised people are hs1 and cytomegalovirus herpes simplex herpes simplex 1 and cytomegalovirus are two um infectious agents that can cause esophagitis in immunocompromised people okay another one is candida uh then what else hs1 can cause esophagitis in healthy individuals also then hs1 is going to cause what type of ulcers they are going to cause punch like punched out ulcers are seen in hs1 hs1 causes punched out ulcers then coming on to this topic esophageal ring <clears throat> we know that there are different different esophageal rings you have got type a type b type c okay what about uh, which one is type a esophageal ring above the gastroesophageal junction it is called as type a esophageal ring it is uh, if it is present at the squamocolumna junction it is type b or schadsky ring uh, if it is in the distal esophagus or uh, it is a rare cause of esophageal ring rarely it is seen distal to the in the seen in the distal esophagus it is called as type c type c okay so esophageal ring above the gastroesophageal junction is type a at the squamocolumna junction is uh, borshadsky okay borshad uh, sorry sorry b or shadsky ring and rare uh, in the distal esophagus is called as type c streak house syndrome is a syndrome associated with the esophageal ring where you have got food impaction due to this schadsky ring okay when you have got um, food impaction due to schadsky ring it is called as um, streak house syndrome okay uh, the squam at the squamocolumna junction you have type b or schadsky ring remember that then eosinophilic esophagitis um where is it okay eosinophilic esophagitis eosinophilic esophagitis causes feline esophagus it is called as feline esophagus there are uh, multiple um, like uh, fissures like this okay due to reflux esophagitis chronic grd you have got feline esophagus like this and uh, treatment is you can do diet modification you can give them steroids 
Eosinophilic esophagitis is due to infiltration of eosinophils in the esophagus associated with atopy. So what are we giving? We give steroids. And you can also give diet modification. Why? Because eosinophilic esophagitis can be caused due to food allergens like food allergens leading to dysphagia, food impaction. So you do diet modification. Then what else? Uh, plumma vincent syndrome is it progressive or non-progressive that is a question plumma vincent syndrome is actually non-progressive it don't progress okay then um, plumma vincent syndrome it is more commonly seen in females more than 40 years there can be associated chelosis also okay then what else uh, distal esophageal spasm it is going to show cork screw esophagus cork screw esophagus and it can be uh, presenting in the uh, form of dysphagia or angina like chest pain okay then what else uh, most common site of extranodal lymphoma in GIT is in stomach extranodal in lymphoma in GIT the most common site is stomach okay then we have got Boerhaave syndrome Mallory Vistia both of them uh, may be associated with vomiting uh, Boerhaave syndrome is more dangerous whereas Mallory Vistia is a partial thickness tear partial thickness tear. Borhaus syndrome is a transmural complete thickness tear usually seen at the distal esophageal usually distal esophageal rupture can be presented due to violent retching. This is an MNC condition you need to do surgical intervention for this Borhaus syndrome. Sorry. Uh, then we have got Senger's diverticulum. It is due to a defect in Killian's dehiscence. I always forget where uh, this Killian's dehiscence is located. Uh, it is composed of oblique fibers of thyropharyngeus muscle and also horizontal fibers of cricopharyngeus muscle oblique fibers of thyropharyngeus it can be written as ot and horizontal fibers of cricopharyngeal muscle oblique fibers of thy uh, thyropharyngeus and horizontal fibers of cricopharyngeus muscle and it is located just above the upper esophageal sphincter okay so that is about sengers diverticulum